Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Welcome back, everybody, to Team Empire versus E Home, game number two, our last Reserve game of time. the night, Blitz. Is it? It is indeed. I, I feel promise. like we're just never going to stop. Nope. <laughs> we are never going to stop. I woke up at 8 a.m. today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's now 10 p.m. I woke up at uh, 6 a.m. Radiant Team Ban. Wait, aren't you tired? No, we get to. We get I to, operate on hype. We get to sleep at like down. till like five p.m. tomorrow if we want. Yeah. Let's be real here. So yeah, whatever. we we can forego sleep for the next yeah, two hours if Team Empire and E Home want to make a very epic another match seventy-five for us. minute game. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Knoxville was asking me. He was like, Ten "What is it? Uh, what is different about this meta that we're seeing so many divine rapiers?" And I said, "Well, one, uh, the, the teams are actually very even on skill level, so we're having very close games that manage to go into late game instead of one-sided twenty-five minute games. But also, uh, a clear prevalence for gyrocopter is a very obvious reason why we see Ember a lot Spirit of divine too. rapiers. And I said, Ember Spirit yeah. is the other hero. Th those two are very clearly the best heroes." Ten seconds. Uh, to operate remaining. with a divine rapier. Yeah, I completely agree. I think um, Five seconds remaining. part of the reason, too, is just that it's like you said, things are really close, but time. getting a divine rapier also changes so much of your fortunes. Like You can just completely turn stuff around, but oh, it's hard to analyze when Dire I team my brain is like sponged out right Turning now. to mush? Yeah, just... I really felt like I analyzed that last game pretty well. Like, Radiant I knew that the turnaround pick. was coming, you know, I kept saying, like, it's all good, like, once they get the two BKBs, you know, I was pretty adamant about that, right? But mm -hmm. I just, I was, I just kept thinking about how, how is Empire going to lose this game? Like, I yeah. just didn't think it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I was trying to think of ways that Ehome could win, and it was hard, but I did it. And then I was like, okay, how is Empire going to win? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, Empire won this game. How is Ehome going to win? And it just keeps remaining. going oh, back man. and forth. And... It's like my never-ending quest Five to figure out which one is Scriff and which one is Wepas. <laughs> I like write it down in my hand. Reserve time. Just like, yeah, it's just like it, it's that scene from Memento. No, it's it's the, it's the Simpsons, little... dude. It's like it's like Carl White Dire Lenny Black. Oh, yeah. That's what it just says on his hand. Wait, how do you describe Wepis and how do you describe Scriff? Is it Scriff, Scriff is... has more hair? Yeah, Scriff has more. Hair. He's got he's got better facial hair too. Wepis has to shave whatever he can't. Yeah. It's it's not working. Come on, dude. Let's move on from it. <laughs> what bus is my homie, too? Like, oh. I know I don't work well with facial hair. It just makes me look like... Ten seconds yeah, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. You're acting like you can grow facial Five hair. I can. Remaining. I can do it in small patches. Yeah, maybe if you didn't shave for the last seven years, yeah. maybe like you would have a little Some bit. Some people have, like, no shave November. I've got no shave life. <laughs> so, uh, 25 years running strong. Oh boy! All right, so Team Empire starting off with the gyrocopter, Ehome, Razor, and Winter Wyvern once again. They seem to really like the the Razor versus gyrocopter. It's just a really stable hero at the same time. Mm -hmm. It allows your laning so many options. It's tanky, and I mean Team Empire. They take gyrocopter again. I think gyro I saw on Reddit was like eighty four percent win rate, but Empire somehow Radiant lose with their last man. game despite. The fact that I thought like everything was going really smoothly for them, but um, you know what I thought it was actually in hindsight. I don't want to really bring this up, but that refresh orb did not pay off. I almost never saw him get the Ten combo off. Did you? No, I I can't actually think. I of the actually time can't remember when he remaining. double. I maybe once. Yeah, it just. I Dire really think he man. needed a BKB to get it off. <laughs> like. I, now it's just like, all right, whatever. But anyways, <laughs> the Tusk is going to be the pickup for Team Empire. I think it was you that said it, actually, and pointed it out accurately that it's not a hero that Empire overvalue Ten because they remaining. like to take the Earthshaker or the... Or there's just a lot of other options that they like to take. Five yeah. seconds remaining. The CIS scene in a general, though, still kind of always valued the Tusk. And now Reserve that he's become time. such a prevalent hero of the meta, Team Empire will go ahead and pick it up. As their second pick, uh, next set of bands here on Dying Darkseer. Team Empire taking away some of the combination heroes that work really well with Winter Wyvern. And Radiant uh, well, Bloodseeker. 
I really hope Empire can turn this game around. Like, I just want to see them win at least one game today. Like, for them to go 0 and 4, there's always that meme that Empire disappoints at TIs. Like, they do well in everything else. We mentioned it at the very beginning of the cast. Yep. And I was like, this isn't the year. Empire's got this. They look phenomenal. They got first, Five first, second in their last three lands. There's just zero chance. They're so prepared. They read this patch well. Yada, yada, yada. yada. Everything is just in there. <laughs> the stars have aligned, you uh -huh. know? Like, the stars have aligned. It's like Empire is that unattractive Asian boy that's slightly overweight that meets that beautiful Caucasian female. And I, Team Empire is that Asian boy. And TI5 Grand Finals is that, is that Caucasian girl. Do you understand who I'm talking about, Austin? Yes. I understand that you are referencing yourself. Yes, exactly. And, and if I can do girlfriend. it, then Empire can if do it. you can do it, then Empire can do it. Then Empire can win Empire, if I can get a girlfriend, you can win <laughs> just this one game against e -home, please. I would sacrifice her right now. What? For this one win. Ask you Griff. You would sacrifice been, her. The thing is, I don't even know anyone on Empire. You can ask Griff. Like, I am Dire much more biased pick. towards MVPs. Again, for secret, for oh, come on, you talk to resolution. Yeah, I, me and resolution are homies because he owes whoa, me money. Wow, you were like, I don't know, Team Empire. I have no bias because he owes me money. But let me and finish this. Like, let me finish this. I know resolution. He's my homie. He is, because he owes homies. me homies. Homies, but the thing is, is that even though I don't know their players very well, aside from Ten resolution, I just want them to win. I feel like they just deserve to do better than this. Five That's the thing. So I'm rooting for them. I have no bias towards any of my teams. If anything, I want to see them lose so I can laugh at them. Reserve but time. Empire, just please, whatever deity there is that I have to pray to that will allow them to win TI5. Like, I will do it. Like, uh, I just need this. And I, it's not even Empire that I need this. And they now just we're need... going to continue this the completely unbiased cast of Team Empire vs. <laughs> E-Home. There are more players on eHome that look like me, so it probably evens <laughs> out halfway. Yeah, but you don't like other Asian people. I, dude, that's a little bit overdrawn. <laughs> All right, Shadow Fiend. Third pick up here for eHome, which relegates now our Razor to the safe lane, most Radiant likely. And Shadow Fiend as our mid, unless if for some reason there's just a matchup that Shadow Fiend really doesn't want to take. One versus one. Bane picked up by Team Empire, though, now. We saw this controlling hero do some work so far in the group stages, but I have to say I'm not entirely convinced. I don't know what your problem is against Bane. Bane's an awesome hero. He... I mean, I, I no, listen. Remaining. I was the one who was, who was calling a little bit Dire like, hey, we should pick. see a little bit more Bane, but uh, I, I'm just feeling like oftentimes in the games that I see him, I don't feel like he's going to be You're as not convinced. strong yeah. as... Yeah. All right, Empire, it's Radiant Destin. Team, you pick yeah. Storm. Like, th there's just so many things lining up for me to root for Empire to win. They've got the, the blue man. They're playing against a Razor. Like, I... <laughs> You just have Empire. Like, E-Home, you've won one game. Ten seconds just remaining. don't let Empire MUFC this. Like, just one win. That's, <laughs> Five seconds remaining. that's all they need. That's all I require in my life. Just no team to finish without a win. Like, Reserve every time. team. MVP Hot 6 has one. MVP Phoenix has one. I actually don't think MVP there's a MVP Phoenix with... actually has two, I think. Do they? No, they beat Na'Vi once and they lost. No, okay. Zero, 2 zero, or 1-1. One, one. So, Empire... I'm not going to be biased because I'm just not biased in my cast, but I can have personal feelings. I'm not a robot. I can, I can want Empire. And I want them to win for the right reasons, too. I'm not a robot, I just don't want them to not, like, because I know it's going to happen. They're going to get made fun of, and everyone's going to say, oh, CIS, CIS teams can't do it, but they can do this. I, they can do this. I just, I know it. I am 100% certain of it. Ten seconds They can remaining. win this game. I'm channeling all my energy. Take my energy, not my rares. <laughs> I will give you Radiant Scrip or Wet Boss. I really can't tell the difference, but <laughs> I would give Empire one oh, of those God. two for them to win this game. Just, Dire team pick. I can't stress enough. Okay, so E home pick Shadow Shaman. They just don't. <laughs> that hero doesn't even deserve to win. I haven't seen that hero since Jo whooped me in KDL with that hero. Like, there's. Come on. 
Empire, just it doesn't even matter. Pick techies. Like just go go for it. Tuscar techies. YOLO all in. That's the game winning combination. Alright, Yoki gets to play Earthshaker again. He was such a beast. Here we go. You done? Yes, you I'm good. good. I just I had to get it out there. I figured I'd just let you go. i let you go and flame every single one of the E-Home heroes and go ahead and... Dude, praise, E-Home's lineup is so every good. every single one of the Empire heroes. E-Home's lineup is so good. How do you fight into that? They have Radiant SF. That's going to be miserable to play against. Radiant SF, defensive tri lane around a Razor, Clockwork off lane. Team Empire, though, have picked up the Yoki Earthshaker once again, as if we... Were we thought that somehow that would be anything different for Team Empire. I mean... It's you, worked out in every game thing for is, Yoki specifically. Empire tricked them. Empire's Ten like, this Tuscar's gonna be our offlaner. Uh -huh. But then Yoki's like, nope, it's gonna be the Earthshaker. <laughs> nope. Did you really think differently, remaining. you fools? <laughs> Man, Earthshaker looks even angrier. After hitting like 18 five-man Echo Slimes in a row and losing last game, he, the hero he looks just looks... Pissed. Yeah, he's, he's just done. like, I can't even believe Dota. <laughs> All right, Team Empire, hoping, searching, pleading, anything for this win. Day number one of the group stage. Going into game number two, up against E-Home. They lost the first two games against VG Gaming. They lost their first game against E-Home. They are desperate for a win here. And this may be the winning combination. They've got a Tusk. They've got Yoki's Earthshaker. Maybe the stars will line up as Blitz Dota is really pleading for <laughs> Empire. Three manning into the secret shop here, hoping to find that early first blood. But uh, a ping has already gone out from E-Home. Oh, they know. They spotted it out. Clockworks rotation through the secret shop. Got a small glimpse battle. of them. What they were trying to do is they were hoping that the clockwork wasn't sitting on top of this hill. Like, if they all sit on top of this hill, then they can go for the wraparound. Right. I've done that before. That actually works really... It's really successful if it does work. But you have to kind of get lucky. <laughs> or I remember at MLG when Bulba just straight up went AFK. <laughs> you remember when he died as Clock? Yeah. Yeah, that has, that, that has to happen too. But this game, it's a Storm Spirit the against a Shadow Fiend. It's begins. not a winnable matchup for um, the Storm Spirit in the least. Like, this is just a flat-out matchup loss. And so what you have to do as a Storm Spirit is just abuse the jungle. You can't overstay your welcome in the lane. Like, the SF yeah. is going to naturally outfarm you. You have to accept that. You use the jungle, and then eventually you pick up your level 7 or 8, and you have to try and jump into the Shadow Fiend's jungle, right? To, to stop his farming up and, and catch him out somehow there. I don't even know if that's possible, especially since DDC is just going to come and do Winter Wyvern things. <laughs> yeah, Denied. with DDC actually trying to go for the Courier, but... This is so. This is really difficult for a storm to deal with because um, I know it's been said before, but Shadow Fiend is a hero that really relies on this early soul lead. And what actually ends up happening a lot of the times is you go for the raise because it's so hard for him to CS, right? But because that early rotation came in, and because the Winter Wyvern got the block off for CTY, it helps him so much to develop this lead. And now he's got pretty decent base damage, and going for CS is okay now. Resolution. A raise just to keep him a bit low. Of course, he still has that one shooter Tango plus a health potion. In our top lane, we do have a Clockwork from Ehome facing up against a Bane, Tusk, and Gyrocopter lane. I actually have a hard time thinking of a more dangerous lane than this for a Clockwork. Snowball plus a Gyrocopter means that they can go straight onto the Clockwork and not have to worry about Cogs at all. They easily have the damage to kill the Clockwork with the Rocket Barrage, and the whole entire thing is set up by an early Nightmare from Always One. On a fly. This team's almost a nightmare scenario for ROTK. You see the strength of the Razor? Yoki doesn't even bother going to the bottom lane because he realizes he's just going to get zoned out solo. And what this allows them to do is Lanem gets to pretty much farm the jungle camp and pull and stack because Raz Shadow Shaman is just an awful hero if you're behind. Like, it's just, it doesn't really do anything. It's incredibly level dependent. So if he doesn't right. get levels, if he doesn't get farm, the hero just doesn't really provide a lot for you. And so incredibly important for him to be able to stack and pull and just gain levels independent of the Razor, right? And you can't really do that if you're against an offlaner that can contest you heavily, but that's not the case here whatsoever. Alright, TK snags the battle rune at the top lane, but it's Yoki who grabbed the invis rune 
at bottom lane and is hoping to be able to set up for some sort of upset here in the middle lane. Helping out CT, or sorry, Resolution Storm Spirit against CTY's Shadow Fiend. That well, with the Winter Wyvern leaving, perhaps it's possible. Just seems the Resolution is too low on HP. There's no way they attempt this anymore. Yeah. If Resolution Dyer's gets raised twice and the Winter attack. Wyvern hits him with the Arctic Burn, he's just dead. So they're not even going to bother going for this, but Yoki doesn't really know what to do because this bottom lane... There was a timing where uh, YJ actually pushed out the bottom lane, and he could have just gone back there to get some XP, but he opted to go for the mid gank instead. And so it's just a 50-50 shot, right? But he has to know that DDC has no incentive of being in the bottom lane, because there's nobody there. You don't have to worry about the Earthshaker contesting your Razor's farm, especially. Push back there. Nice hit from ROTK, and he's actually getting a lot more from this lane than I ever would have expected. Just the natural danger of Tusk and Gyrocopter, I thought would have at least gotten them the kill on the clockwork if ROTK played forward enough to be able to get this much experience, but hey, it seems to be going incredibly well for him, and the Dyer just now focusing more on pulling. In fact, Bane just did a single pull now. Uh, does this mean he's going to try and rotate around behind the tower to catch out the clockwork? That is sometimes a common play for supports when they single pull. The creepy equilibrium is then going to push into the lane, so they try and utilize that big creep wave to dive the tier one from behind. Snowball's going to get laid out on ROTK. They have the Bane there as well. Double damage was snagged by the clockwork. Actually, the Snowball went for CTY, chasing him away. They have the Ice Shards in the right spot. Yep, ROTK trapped out, and he will finally be going down for our first blood of the game. I almost think it was, it would have been more worth it if Aloha Dance just allowed Resolution to get that last hit. Because they were both traveling in the air and he got the overload, he went for the overload hit where you just allow the remnant, or the attack to fly and cast remnant on the ground at the same time. But uh, he does get the last hit and it probably doesn't matter. Like Getting first blood is the overall goal. Like that's more important than anything. Uh, I'm probably just saying that as a greedy player who would have just Ask my support to give that to me. Greedy player. Greedy Storm Spirit player. Resolution's still not that far behind. Like, CSY, he's doing rather well against CTY. 22 and 3 compared to the 24 and 6 on CTY. And he still this, has a full wave problem, to though. clean. It's this area in the jungle that's just stacked four times up that's mm. going to just completely change things. You do have a double stack. Uh, you can see our Tusk is just now taking some time to do that. He used Ice Shards and his, his hero to stack up both medium camp and hard camp. So there is some farm to be had by Resolution, but obviously you're right. There's just no way a Shadow uh, Storm Seer can keep in pace with a Shadow Fiend who's got this many stacks. Yeah, but they've actually done a pretty good job of keeping up in stacks with that because you can't just let the Storm Spirit static from the lane like this. It's just a little Radiance bit too hard. Middle tower is under attack. Nothing really else is happening on the map. Oh, CTY has already dropped low. Resolution, though, it does not seem to have damage. Both races there. Now it looks like he's going to go so for the kill on DDC. Resolution, he's still got plenty of mana. Jumps forward to get the Winter Wyvern kill. And Resolution now needs to bottle back up. Loha Dance has dropped quite low. RTK and Lonim looking to be able to get that kill. Resolution is going to go down to CTY as well. They committed quite heavily for that Winter Wyvern and kind of pay the ultimate price. Yeah, that definitely wasn't worth it. I think Resolution smelled blood. He thought it was a good idea, but... Oh, CTY. always want to fly. He had such tunnel vision there to be able to get that bounty rune ahead of the Radiant's SF, but a raise one, yeah, a right click, and another raise actually finishes him up shortly after he picks up that bounty. All right, is CTY actually going for a hand of Midas? This would be so greedy. He's actually going to bottle crow right now, but it's not an efficient time to bottle crow. But he's going to go for it anyways. He got the speed burst, but he doesn't have mana to farm anything. And they have placed this ward here, but it cost them an observer ward to be able to do this, which isn't optimal. And on top of that, your storm spirit did die for that. And so he's going to get quite far behind in, in, uh, in net worth. If you notice, the Shadow Fiend already has 1k. That's yeah. so much. That's almost. At <laughs> seven minutes, drives. that's. Yeah. A pretty insane lead. E-Home continuing to get some really good double and triple pulls out of their Shadow Shaman support, who is now sitting at uh, level four. 
pretty good uh, net worth lead for a support anyway. And as you said, like Shadow Shaman's a pretty miserable hero to play when he's behind. Doesn't seem like our Shadow Shaman, at least to start things out, is going to be well behind at all. This doesn't do enough for you, is the issue. And so, uh, in the mid game, he's just going to have to. Usually, what happens is in the mid game, you want to be level six by the time uh, people Radiant's have no items, so you can just go around the map dropping wards for free, and people Radiant can't contest structures it. Are fortified. If you're not level six at a reasonable time, you just aren't able to do anything on the map to get pressure out. Yeah, our TK, he's done for Snowball and the Gyrocopter. That combination, RTK is going to have a hard time against Empire. Top tower is Should be able attack. to put some serious damage on that tier 1 tower. Siege Wagon stays alive. It's always the question, right? Do you want to tank up for the Siege Wagon? It seems like Empire actually tried to do so, but not in time. They will stay take this tier 1. Maybe not. Here comes the first rotation of the Razor. Who is right now sitting at level 8 is a fearsome hero to try and fight this early on to the game, but they're gonna try and do it anyway. Call down and the rock brush are gonna be coming in. He accidentally woke himself up, yeah, but it's still fine. Silent gets the kill. RTK coming in with his tranquil boots, trying to run somebody down with the battery cell, but is unable to do so. Now the heroes are coming in from behind. Empire did an early five manning that will catch not only the razor, but the clockwork as well. And also this tier one tower is completely forfeit. They did lose the bottom tier one tower fallen. to the Shadow Fiend alone, who just continues Dyer's to get a massive amount of farm. Under and his net worth lead just Dyer's continues to steadily climb over 1,200 over the Storm Surge, who I thought would even it up a little bit more after the stacks, but Resolution just might be going down to the double raise right now. Yep, the hold there from the Shadow Shaman is too much to handle. And now the later TP. It was an Earthshaker anyway. It wasn't going to be able to do attack. much, so he home. They give up a little bit in that top lane, but it cost Empire a very heavy uh, commitment. All five heroes heading up to that top lane. And he home, that just means they're going to be farming more efficiently. Dyer's and then you include a pickoff like Dyer's that on the Storm Dyer's Spirit Dyer's and a tier two tower. Uh, it, there's no way that trade is ever worth it for Empire. I think that's the first time I've in this tournament, even games where they were absurdly ahead, where I've seen a tier two tower taken this early off. Awesome. Like that's actually crazy that he was able to just hit that. They didn't even have to drop the Serpent Wards for that. Like the Shadow Shaman isn't even level 6. CTY doesn't even have a uh, mechanism and they were able to just drop that tier 2 tower. And just taking a look at the net worth difference, at 10 minutes in the game he almost doubles the Storm Spirit's farm. Ehome probably gonna look to take that middle tower next now that they do have Serpent Wards. And Empire, well they certainly have the team fight Dyer's to top tower is under attack. contest. There's, I don't think there's much questions about that whatsoever. Chirocopter is such a powerful hero early on. Then you've got the Tusk and Earthshaker do a decent amount. It's more just, can you stop the five man from E-Home at this point? You've got a mech on the Shadow Fiend. Lanham is level six right now. I don't even think you have to drop more for this. You can if you want to absolutely secure it. But there's no reason to. And you can just go for the next tier too because YJ has a lot of farm at the same time. I'm not quite sure what item else is going for. Dyer's middle tower has took shot there. e -home still take the tier 1 tower. And it seems still are going to be pushing forward to the next one. Yeah, they can drop the Serpent Wards with this because they've got the Siege Wagon and just split the tank. Silent's going to try to pick off those wards. And this is actually a really good idea by him because it's hard for them to defend this without the Creep Wave. But with this here, it's going to be so hard. Oh, that's a good Ice Charge with the call down on top. Beautiful positioning, hopefully, as they're going to be able to take out two to start with. Empire, the Cox is forcing him back, but an Echo Slam laid out by Yoki catches the Razor as well as the Clockwork. Oh, this is Four a down and, and a wipe. GDC ends it out. Resolution gets the triple kill, and things go from real bad to Empire to real good very quickly. What's even going on? They're just... <laughs> Ehom in such a advantageous position. They had the wards down, they had a mech, they had an Radiant overwhelming farm leaf, but Aloha Dance Radiant's with that Ice Shards, that Snowball, attack. and Silent was just right there with everything that he had, and Yoki coming around from the backside. They had nowhere to go. He Echo Slams into two of those heroes. Empire with the beautiful team play to finally even things up. Ehome almost Radiant's seemed like they wanted to jump attack. in again, ROTK. Walked his way in and does find Aloha Dance. He's now going to be forced into the snowball. This will delay his death. They actually kill the Cogs with Silent, and that actually gets to the opening. They kill ROTK. Now Aloha Dance will be still going down. Oh, no. Silent. Silent. 
The Fisher blocks him out. They even caught Yoki with that one. Silent Turrets gets off some Rocket Barrage damage to end things out. Yoki will manage to make the escape, but it was great Fisher block out in order to try and protect and even kill that clockwork, but the fact that Silent was completely blocked out as well is it kind of poor. Always want to fly. He's going to fly. Lonham here. Resolution's going to jump. And is he going to go for CTY? No, he just pops the Shadow Shaman instead. And now all of a sudden, Resolution's caught up in a big way. He's still a little bit of ways away from the Shadow Fiend, but he's done a good job of capturing up. The problem right now for them still is that uh, even with the kill lead that they have, the Shadow Fiend still has a significant net worth. But I guess at the same time, the Razor actually doesn't really have anything, considering he had free pop the entire time at bottom. I'm not quite sure where his farm is, because if I remember correctly, Yoki wasn't actually in that bottom lane, right? Right. I mean, he was there maybe half the time, but even when he is, like, he's an underleveled Earthshaker in comparison to a Razor. Yeah, YJ right. actually had that lane to himself the entire time, and I just don't know where the net worth is, and net worth is, and I don't think he thought that the Shadow Fiend was going to go for the mech. If you just look at his item build, like, he went for the Ring of Regen, and now he's just kind of switching things over to the drums because he's not entirely sure. A four-man smoke up from Team Empire. They aggressively push into and behind that Tier 1 tower. Seems like they're going to give up on the hopes of killing someone, Radiant's though. They just uh, cut the creep wave real quick Dyer's and go straight from the tower, knowing that uh, E-Home, they're probably up in top lane. Onam's already showed his uh, Serpent Wards. This year one top. This could be Empire going for... No, they, there's no way they can go for an early Roshan, right? So maybe just the bottom tier one tower as a trade-off then? Yeah, the thing that sucks about Storm a lot is you can't do Roshan at any point by yourself. Yeah. Like, no matter what your six slot items are, maybe you could do the first Roshan of the game if you just have a ton of items, Radiance but middle he himself tower is under isn't attack. really built for that function, and neither is Gyrocopter. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Because he's going to go for no negative uh, armored items. He's pretty Radiance much just going to build tower is entirely to be tanky. And for the team Radiance fight, so he can continue to get fortified. Rocket Barrage and Flat Cannon off. So it's almost Dyer's always going to be the Helm of Dominion to under attack. KP. So it just takes too long. Radiance bottom Maybe tower has fallen. Really. Tier 1 tower falls. The top lane is still feeling some pressure from the CTY. Oh, Shadow Shaman. They actually are going to have the uh, TP in to follow that one up. Always want to fly. He's going to be sacked here. Fisher gets laid out. That was always want to fly, I'm presuming, was just trying to get a uh, ward up behind that tier 2 tower. Yeah, he was, but he was so he was so isolated and alone there that it was a little bit too scary. But all right, Cap, what if, what about this? The Bane just gets a medallion, and they go to Roshan. They get an Aegis on the Storm. He has a Bloodstone. <clears throat> they can do so much with that, right? That sounds like a good idea. Like, I mean, Bane, I really like Glimmer Cape on him, uh, just because it works with your channeling capabilities, and Fiend's Grip and everything. But um, a medallion is not a bad idea either. I think the Chinese teams, I think it was C deck actually, I shouldn't generalize and say all the Chinese teams, but they really put a heavy emphasis, whatever lineup they have, they're going to medallion so they can Roshan at any point, at any time. Yeah. Team Empire, four man smoke up, they're heading up to the top lane where Silent is sort of solo pushing that one out and perhaps trying to bait it all the way. And CTY moves forward, he's gonna be caught. Jump in from Resolution as well as the Snowball on top. CTY lets loose that open. No, the Fiends Group actually comes in last half second from Always Wanna Fly, making sure that source of damage and damage reduction isn't there to slow down Empire. They now should be able to take control of this tier two tower. RTK has been caught out by the Ice Shards. Fisher laid up as well, a secondary kill. And now Winter's Curse gets laid into Silent, but Asleep actually saves the Snowball on top of that one. DDC is quickly surrounded. Echo Slam gets laid out. They manage to get the Ice Shards locked down on two, but what a good Serpent Wars is gonna be able to get one and a second on Tusk. And Empire just... Bit too aggressive, similar to the way Ehome showcased their over aggression at the tier two middle tower. Empire lose every single one of their heroes and only really catch CTY out of it. I really don't think they should have gone for that push. They don't have the best tower sieging heroes. Like Storm's a hero that you don't want in the front. Same with an Earthshaker and a Gyrocopter. Going for just splitting up and farm after you kill the Shadow Fiend might have been the better choice. Just because that was just an awkward maneuver overall and 
Maybe they could have accomplished it, but they definitely shouldn't have dove that far past, especially when they didn't really have the mana or HP to deal with it. All right, BKB is still here for the gyrocopter despite them losing that last fight. So, Empire, big upgrade for them. Has to worry a little bit about the physical damage of both the Razor and the Shadow Fiend, but it's early enough in the game that both of those heroes are maybe a bit more reliant on their magic damage than anything else. BKB is the next item from CTY shortly after the mech. Pretty stock standard build there. Razor is going to go for an early BKB as well rather than a quick Aghanim Scepter, though I think that's kind of the norm right now. Yeah, it is. I think getting a BKB just, it helps you so much. Against a lineup that heavily relies on magic damage and Opa Dance is target here and I can beat Yeah, he's <laughs> super dead. There is nowhere to snowball. Snowballs. And immediately dies. Uh, that's kind of weird. Does Tusk not lose damage? I, I think the Razor gains damage when he's got Static Link in the Snowball, but it seemed like the Tusk didn't lose damage. I'm not entirely sure about that interaction. That would be a really specific one. Yeah. That's very weird. Maybe it just didn't update in time when the Tusk came out of his Snowball, but... Yeah, so Resolution, he's got the Bloodstone in just 500 gold. Pretty much similar to what he got it in, I think it was the game against Vici, right? The second game? Uh, around the 20 minute mark, and that'll be reasonable enough. But he has fallen behind the Razor now in net worth. Oh, he's gonna fly, forced to TP away. Is there just not enough reason for Enfeeble at all? In the early game? Because sometimes you see like a 4 4 1 build where there's only one level of sleep. I mean, it's because Razor and, and SF both operate a little bit independent of their physical damage. Like, Razor just obviously drains a whole bunch of Static Link damage, so he can kind of offset the, the debuff there from the Bane. And then the SF obviously is a huge magic damage source um, in the early game. I think it's more just that when you're super under level, every stat point matters. It's not one of those things where you can just decide, okay, I'm going to go for this value point in Enfeeble, right? Um, I think that's the main reason, and the six-second nightmare is really significant. You're just taking somebody out of a fight for a full six seconds. Yeah. Like, that's not a small amount of time, and seconds do add up, and it just feels miserable when you get slept, and I don't think the Enfeeble, the reduction of 30 damage uh, for that skill point is necessarily worth it. Dyer's middle if you consider the mana attack. cost, too. He doesn't have enough to, like, repeatedly cast things, and... In an ideal world, you want to cast the Brain Sap twice and then Nightmare at least once or twice, right? Dyer's middle tower has correct, correct, correct. E-Home, four-man smoke up their own CTY. They're sitting behind him while he pushes out the middle lane. Doesn't seem like anything's going to be baited, except for maybe this double damage room, but never mind. Silent, instead of taking it, he kills it. Dyer's middle tower Shoots it down, attack. and the hook shot is just a bit short, so Radiant's no opportunity tower is under for attack. E -home to catch him. Fire out. Now they're actually going to try and force a fight around Roshan. Serpent Ward's already being dropped by Ehome, but you can see both Yoki and Aloha dance. They know what's going on. Now they're going to be caught out here. The Fisher's already laid down. The Fisher, E Man, stunned. Empire have just kind of slowed down. Oh, Ehome, if anything else, stuck. Yeah, he's going to be hit by the call down. The feed script over the side of the cliff. Ehome had no real way to be able to stop this one. Now, they managed to get the Witcher's Curse on a silent, but there's no heroes around him. He takes no physical damage from that one whatsoever. Fisher block on top of everything else. RTK goes down. Two heroes picked off, and maybe a third is Resolution pursuing for more. DDC is his target. To use the last little bit of mana to try and slow down the Winter Wyvern anymore. Yoki actually is going to be in some serious trouble as SF pops that BKB, turns around with the ultimate. Yoki survives just a bit longer and has his Fisher ready to go, waiting out that BKB. They do heal him up with the urn at the same time, has that Blink Dagger ready to go, but there's no jumping opportunities here just yet. Looks like they should just be able to back up and take Roshan. Yeah, I think going for the Roshan is a much smarter play here. You don't have to continue to overextend anything, and that Winter's Curse was actually ideal for Empire because he was BKB'd up, nobody was near him, 
there's not enough physical damage to kill him when he is BKB'd up, especially with Eohome's team. And so, Resolution is probably the more ideal target, but he wasn't really in a position where that was able to happen. And they were like, so heavily oh, RTK, like, he's still on the horse this one. That's a really good cause. Separating always want to fly away from all of his allies. Now, the Yogi actually pops that Echo Slam, only does a small amount of damage to Law and M. Empire just trying to get away from this one. Aloha Dance with the TP out. There's no stunts to stop him. They actually get away almost scot-free. They only lose the Bane there despite multiple heroes being trapped inside the pit with that fight. That seems so reminiscent of last game. Like Everybody from Empire dies, but they have to sacrifice somebody, and it's always want to fly. They just chose him. Every single time he gets initiated on, they're just like, nope. See you later, buddy. They've got to ditch him there, though. That's a perfectly fine play. You got an Aegis out of it that was pretty much delivered by Ehome. Like, they didn't really have the damage to do that, but once the Roshan had 3,000 3, HP, you can do it pretty easily. So, uh, thanks to Ehome, Empire are able to pick up a Roshan for free, and it's huge on a Storm that has a Bloodstone, because it means it's not even worth it to really go for the gank on him. Because if it doesn't work, and his team is there in time, then you wasted so much effort just trying to kill a Storm that has an Aegis. Yeah, and also means that offensively speaking, the Storm Spirit has many more opportunities to get Bloodstone charged. Exactly. Perfectly put. 14 to 17, the progression of this game, it feels like it's been kind of a wacky back and forth, and the net worth and experience graph showcase that pretty much perfectly. Empire is slightly ahead right now, 1,500 gold and 3,000 experience, though. That's nothing to be over the moon about. Uh, I would say Empire don't have a very clear-cut late-game advantage. I think they do. I think that Razor is just... they. Their team actually kind of lacks mobility, and the way that CTY is building, it's... The mechanism doesn't really do anything to your late-game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, eventually you're going to want to ditch it, so that's an empty item slot. Um, whereas, Gyrocopter didn't go for drums or anything like that. He's actually just building straight into what, I, what he wants ideally late-game. Like, he's got... A Black King Bar, oh, wow. a Helm of Dom, an MKB. Like, he's actually just completely built with um, with the intention of going to the late game. And if you look at the Razor, look at his items. He's got Drums, Aquila, Wand. He's just about to pick up his BKB. The late game potential isn't there. Yeah, much more early to mid game focus build with those kind of smaller items. And they're not actually getting an advantage in this game, clearly. So the MKB, level 16 gyrocopter, that's an incredibly fast MKB, simply because he prioritized it so heavily. This is why Silent and Gyrocopter, it's such an iconic combination for me. He's just so good at getting the most out of the hero. He manages to stay well ahead of the net worth at the top, and Empire with a pretty good control of this game right now. And Is Resol Resolution doing the same thing? Is he going like straight... Uh, um, Sight the Vice? Or no, I think he's going Shivas. Okay. You would go for the ultimate one, I think. Otherwise, the stats are too good, but... Okay. Um, why why Shivas in, in, as opposed to the Sight the Vice? It's actually pretty cool. Um, a, if there are any Blink Daggers on the enemy team, you can cancel it. B, the AoE damage as you roll in is pretty nice. Uh, you get to kind of just deal a ton of damage in the initial roll, which is really important, especially when you have so much AoE follow-up. So I think that it's just a good item overall, and it, it helps you find people too. Like people that wouldn't be hit by your natural roll get hit by your Shivas, so you're almost guaranteeing yourself damage. You're like yeah. a whirling ball that brings death. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. Empire, another push, bottom lane. Uh, they do Dyer's have to kind of worry about the time. Razor, who's already beating on their tier 2 top lane, and that's why the Storm Spirit is the first one to try and dress this. Resolution is going to pursue him out, though. Bottom tower Razor being is probably one of the tougher heroes for Resolution. Attempt to one versus one. You think he should have just gone for it to force the BKB? I think so. I mean, it's there's no way he loses to the Razor. He just maybe doesn't kill it. Jump in. Bottom lane, they're going to try and force this one. Silent committing heavily. Pops the BKB with RTK caught from the Fiend's Grip on the side as well. Now the Razor is here to join the rest of this fight. They manage to pick up the gem, CTY. And 
Now pursue for more. They get a really good ultimate. Silent is dropping lower and lower. Good snowfall. He's going to be able to delay his day. Anong, enough for them to get the rock brush. He survives. Silent is still up, but here comes the Razor. The razor. And he wants to kill, but he can't quite get it. The TP away is there in time. And now Razor's going to be locked in by Yoki, who's still got an Echo Slam, but it's not even necessary. It's looking like they'll get the kill, even if they do lose the Tusk for it. That's a five-man team wipe. You recovered the gem at the same time. I think they... Um, I thought they lost their courier for a second, but no. They actually didn't, but they did get the gem. Radiant's Resolution is just so far. He's got a fully completed Shiva's waiting for once they take this tower. 12 Bloodstone charges, not at all reminiscent Radiant's of that second Beachy game. And they're going to take this tier 2 tower for free. Looks like Ehome are going to go for the deny, but... Nice hit, ROTK. Obviously, he wants to get a hook shot on somebody, but Storm Spirit is definitely not the hero. Everyone else is too far away. Resolution just to round things off. A nice little cherry on top as he leaves the home side of the map. Picks up a regeneration rune for his bottle. I can't believe that Silent didn't die there. I thought he was 100% dead. I didn't even see Resolution come in from nowhere like a bat out of hell. Manages to snag the SF kill. I thought the SF... Uh, after death ultimate would trigger and kill him. Yeah, I thought so too. I was like, oh great, they, you know, the snowball basically delays the gyrocopter's death for him to get a rocket barrage before he dies. And even when the storm hero was coming in, I was like, okay, Jaren was still dead though, right? Oh, uh, right, right, right. CTY, uh-oh, he's been caught by resolution. He pops the mech and tries to get away. Nice glimmer came coming out from Lottam, but Lottam, speaking of him, Yoki just dunks him. CTY now gonna have to deal with the Fiend's grip on top of that, but he has the BKB active. There goes the Winter's Curse. Call down is gonna be laid out. He home. Well, they have to deal with Silent now with Resolution coming in for the side. CTY can't get off the ultimate. He dies. And now the Razor's left all alone with his BKB fading. Resolution will finally drop his first death and ever since he picked up that Bloodstone, but it's well worth it. They managed to wipe E home and still, once again, recover that gem. Storm Spirit, he's already back. He had 15 Bloodstone charges when he died, so now he's ready to join his teammates. Yeah, and they just completely reset. They take the tower too. Radiance the Storm Spirit still has, has above gone. average Bloodstone charges. He doesn't even care if he dies anymore because Silent is just so farmed. He's built Radiance perfectly for this type of game where attack. he's the primary damage dealer. And that's the reason why I feel the Storm doesn't go for the Orchid here or go for the Hex. He's just trying to be as a big of a nuisance as possible. Paint the target on his back, allow Silent to go to town. and. Big props to both Yoki and Always Wanna Fly, who was able to get that Fiend's Grip off on that Shadow Fiend while he was channeling his ultimate, and so much of that Radiant's BKB on the Shadow Fiend was wasted. Attack. Absolutely. Tower has fallen. Tier 2 tower, another one falls. Storm Spirit, who just picked up the Shivas, already has 1300 gold. Silent, who picked up the MKB not so long ago, has 4700, so he can actually complete a, a butterfly here quite soon. I'm presuming that's his... No. An ultimate orb, so is this Shiva's? What, Shiva's? Scotty, you mean? Uh, I'm sorry, Scotty, yes. Yeah, you could go for Scotty. Manta style is an option too, I guess, but mm -hmm. maybe if you fear going high ground, Manta would be okay here. Yeah. I think it's, it just a feels a little though. weird to go the MKB and then back for sort of the lesser, you know, sort of, uh, I would say, medium tier item with the Manta. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Oh, he actually just grabbed the orb of venom. You gotta so. go. You gotta play devil's advocate, though. Yeah. I understand. Scotty seems to be the item choice. ROTK thought about going up to the top lane. That's just not an option, though. They're just afraid right now to take any sort of fight because once you lose this many towers in succession, and once you've lost all your tier twos, any mistaken fight can just cost you a lane of racks. A lot of. Places down the war, the first of the call-down hits does snag him, but Silent, maybe he's just too far forward here. The rest of the team is coming in. He's actually locked in by the Shadow Chomp Awards resolution. It's going to be hit by that Witcher's Curse, the SF Ultimate. On top of that, a good Echo Slam laid out by Yogi, but is it enough to be able to recover this fight? Silent pops BKB, but he's running out of damage. His Razor is stealing so much. He's got 112 great Fisher block out from Yogi, but they've lost two for one. And it seems Empire jumping the gun a little bit. Silent just too far forward there. And the Winter's Curse absolutely nullified that entire fight for them. And that has to be the target for resolution, I think. When you walk in, when you roll in, I know what he was trying to do. He was trying to save um, Silent. He thought he was in danger, but still, the Winter Wyvern is just doing too much in these fights.
right now with this Winter's Curse. They have to go for the next Roshan, though. It's absolutely pivotal that it goes on to the Storm Spirit. Gyrocopter is so tanky now, so he probably doesn't need it, but the Storm most definitely does. Well, that Scotty is here, so silent. Man, I just can't believe he was that so that far forward with the Scotty coming into him like that from the Courier. I think they're playing it a little bit cocky. Yeah. They should try to remember what happened last game and just tell them. Remember the fact that they're dealing with three losses and they can't afford another yeah, one? Yeah, just relax a little bit. I know they, they have to be disappointed in that last game, but at the same time, you have to try to forget about it and just kind of play a little bit safer than you did in the previous one. And Empire is going to go f this time for the Roshan, and it was actually the Tusk that went for the Medallion, but somebody had to get it for them yeah. to do Roshan in a deep and a reasonable amount of time. Looks like Yuki's going to be going for the Octarine Core, I presume, with this point booster. Um, maybe a Yolo Axe. Do you really think that's... Uh, it seems very, very rare that Aghanim Scepter is actually more valuable than something like a Veil. Uh, increases the power the of the ultimate, yes, the but it, it, I feel like cost-wise, it's only actually effective if you're dealing with an illusion hero like a Phantom Lancer. Oh. I guess I'm just not in love with the concept of Turf Shaker off the court, but maybe I've just had bad experiences. I, I, mean, I have to look into it more. Yeah, I think I like it just so much because you can actually get two fishers in a fight, potentially, whereas most fights, it's just not possible. I okay, mean, like 15 enough. seconds, unless you're getting the very first Fisher and the team fight actually still draws out for another 15 seconds, you can get a second one. This Aegis on the Storm Spirit, I think this is going to mean high ground, or at the very tower. least, Resolution just tries to YOLO in and hope that Yoki gets some sort of angle to get the Echo Slime off. The spread here, Yoki sitting very far in the back. Two supports flanking their cores. Loha Dance does have the Blink Dagger, so if something goes really bad, well, excluding the Winter's Curse Hold. Actually, speaking of that, Resolution's gonna try and jump. DDZ immediately taking him out. TTY no still alive back there, and TTY goes down as well. It's the Razor who's left. The Sheep is already going out. Resolution will end up losing that Aegis now. ROTK, well, he's probably gonna be taken out by the Storm Spirit. He's gonna zip on over, get that kill on ROTK, and zip on out. So Empire, they managed to survive with multiple heroes dropping very low. I'm not even sure how Aloha Dance got over there, but... He managed to get himself into the trees on the far left side of the base. Does manage to TP out, and Silent is also quick up on the tree as well. TP'd up to the top lane to farm up the incoming wave. You managed to get the gem back, which is pretty significant. Uh, it helps their, they get one of the gems or whatever. Maybe they bought their own actually. But, uh, two buybacks are forced, I think, by Ehome. They used it on the Shadow Fiend, I believe, and maybe that was it actually. But it was a BKB. Yeah, that was it. And now it's five seconds. I think it was six right before this fight. There probably doesn't have too big of a bearing, but it's more just that CTY doesn't have the best late game progression. Probably the only item you really want to keep in the ultra ultra late game is the Black King Bar, right? Like at some point you're going to get rid of the SNY later on in the game, but probably sooner than that you want to get rid of the mech. Racer's pretty far forward here. Little hot tance. Can't get there anyway, and he doesn't have his damage healers. Anyway, Gyrocopter, he finished up his, his Scotty a while back and talked about that. He now goes for the Boots of Travel and can sell the Phase Boots for an extra slot. Butterfly, still the option here? Yeah, because if Silent gets Winter's Cursed, you get the Butterfly. I'm pretty sure your teammates miss, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so nobody on his team is really I building an so. MKB. Um, so it's going to be pretty effective in dealing with the Winter's Curse. The problem right now is that if it goes on the Storm Spirit, Resolution doesn't have the best way to deal with it. So you either have, to, if you're Resolution here, you have to go for the Hex or you have to go for the Lincolns yeah. just to be able to deal with it. And uh, they don't have this Aegis anymore, but it does look like they're still interested in getting into a fight. Inside the Vice now finished up for Resolution. So say goodbye to your Winter Wyvern. Perhaps every single team fight uh, Resolution is yes. going to be looking to jump in first. He's now got the lockdown bottom lane actually blocking him out. The ice shards make sure that there's nowhere for Razor to run to. 
Fiends grip on top of that. The hook shot is going to be able to lay down. Silent is going to try and fight up against the Razor, but he has to get away from that static link first and then return back in. Resolution, meanwhile, jumps CTY in order to slow him down. Lotus Orb is actually stunning some of the damage. Great Winter's Curse, but it was stalled up by the Snowball. They do manage to finally finish up two, but now the Yogi gets laid out. Yogi stuns up CTY for Resolution, just needs to finish off that carry for them, but run low, a bit low on mana, and they turn for Lanham instead. CTY. Are we still going to go for this, I think? Cruising on back. ROTK is the target and sent from Resolution. They get the easier kill. SF now back to his fountain. Will heal up for the Empire. Big win. And will now be able to take the Tier 3 tower. And perhaps this, I would actually guarantee this racks. There is no buybacks whatsoever for Miho. That was almost a game or er, a fight changing Lotus Orb used on the Razor. He brain sapped the pain right back. Uh, but it still wasn't enough for them to accomplish anything really in the fight. Because Resolution just has racked up the Bloodstone charges. Right, he just bought the Hex, if I'm not mistaken, and he's already built up 2,000 gold on top of that. The Silence already got a butterfly coming at the same time. There's just so much. He actually accidentally bought. Wait, who's the second talisman of evasion for? That has to be for the Solar Crest, right? Yeah. His name's just not showing up. Yeah, that's a little weird. So Roshan's going to be up at 41 minutes. If you're Empire, you probably wait for it and then try to collapse on a second set of racks. There's that Octarine Core for Earthshaker. 11 second Fisher, 3.75 second Enchant Totem, so he's got Aftershock stuns for days. And let's not forget that Echo Slam. What a useful ability it is. It'll be up almost every single team fight now, guaranteed. Tusk got that Solar Crest, just amping up the power of the Gyrocopter. Double evasion. And e Ehome do not have an MKB on either one of their heroes and aren't even close to it. Razor's building into an Assault Kiraz in the Shadow Fiend. He's just kind of poor. Yeah, CTY hasn't had too much farm progression. He, he's had a buyback twice this game. If uh, or at least once. At the very minimum, he fought back. I think it was just once, but still. Yeah. It does slow you down quite a bit, and not being able to access the jungle as a Shadow Fiend is also really hampering his farm ability, and it's just the overall map control that's been taken by Empire, because nobody on Ehome right now wants to get picked off, for obvious reasons, but even more importantly, it's that the Razor and the Shadow Fiend can't afford to buy back right now. The Shadow Fiend can't in another two minutes, the Razor just simply doesn't have enough money, and so it is on... E home the onus is on Ehome to be able to hold this because if Empire mess up this fight, they're still in a good position. I know I'm saying that despite what happened last game, but most of their heroes can just immediately buy back. Empire poking and prodding down at this bottom lane while it's the gyrocopter with his evasion from Butterfly Radiance allowing him to stand underneath the attack. tower and now stack that evasion. Oh, they managed to do an offensive force staff in, but there is a snowball save. They immediately go for Lana, but their Lotus Arm is there, plus the Winter's Curse. Zion is locked down and takes a good amount of damage to come with the wards trapping oh, him in. And Zion is still getting a huge black cannon shot with the Aftershock on top of that. Yoki just destroys E Home, and there it is. GG. Empire finally getting their win for the group stages. Oh my. Yoki is so him. What a great fight by Empire overall. I really thought this was going to be another heartbreak for Empire. The early laning phase didn't go well for them. Then they got five-man wipe. Yep. Then somehow they managed <laughs> to five-man wipe them back. I was a little bit worried there, but Empire, leave no doubt. They're able to close out this game and secure themselves at least one victory in the group stages.